Righto. Welcome to ODT Rugby Chat. We're here at the stadium. Um, we're really here to talk, we'll talk a wee bit about club rugby. We want to talk about this weekend. It's the big game uh, tomorrow night. It's the Chiefs playing the Highlanders. So to discuss that with me, I've got Brownie. Uh, the coach, and I've got uh, the world's biggest media star and part-time rugby player, Joe Wheeler. So, Joe, mate, we'll start with you. Um, so, when do you fit rugby in? Yeah, it's, it's obviously tough at the moment, PD. Um, there's a bit going on, but nah, in all seriousness, it's, it's a little side gig that's going all right at the moment, and, um, yeah, the boys seem to get a bit of stick from it, but, um, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, but credit where credit's due, you know, and I'm, 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 I don't give much praise, but I thought that the... Um, I thought that the, the, the song video um, with the Barracuda was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, well, that was obviously um, one of our big draw cards for the year. It was something that's in the pipeline for a while. So um, we needed that to go really well. Um, it's gone all right. Um, it hasn't gone to number one in New Zealand, which is disappointing. But, um, you know, small steps in a singing career that is hopefully going to take off. Right on, mate. And Brownie, so does he actually train? Oh, it's all perception. So he's in, in the... Limelight, I guess, quite a bit. So everyone thinks he's a good player. So um, <laughs> he's got to keep pushing that. He's got to keep pushing that. Well, let's come on. Let's talk some rugby. Um, the Reds game. I thought it was your worst game of the year. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, I'd, probably yes. Um, yeah, we just uh, lost a bit of uh, a bit of shape there and lost our didn't stick to our plans and um, we played into the Reds' hands really in that first half, which cost us the game. And in, in, in that game, so Joe, on that game, I thought the the forwards probably had their poorest performance of the year in that game. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. Um, our set piece was under pressure, and um, we probably just didn't adapt to it uh, quite well enough. And and like Brownie said, we we played into their hands by by playing uh, some unstructured footy rather than just um, doing what we've been doing all season and sticking to what we know and, and what works for us best. But yeah, they were a desperate team, and and yeah, we just we just threw the ball around willy nilly and gave them opportunities. So, Brownie, let's talk... The, you've had the break now and you came back and played that game last weekend in Vicargo. So, mate, the whole break thing from a coaching point of view, is it ideal? Oh, not ideal, but uh, it is what it is and um, we've obviously planned, planned around it and I think uh, we're actually looking in pretty good shape heading in tomorrow night's game. Um, all the boys are, um, you know, feeling fresh and ready to go. So, how did the game... Bit of a muddling game from what I can. I've only read reports of it. So how did the? So did you get a lot out of that game in Invercargill last week? Oh, not really. Just um, you know, more to give the guys a bit of a hit out and um, give a few guys opportunities. And you can obviously see by the selection that a couple of guys took those opportunities. And uh, yeah, so hopefully they'll perform well again tomorrow night. So I haven't actually seen the team as yet because I'm actually not that well prepared as you'd imagine. Um, so where are we at? What changes it's, have you made? This journalism 101, mate. Yeah, well, I'm not a journalist, mate. I'm just not a journalist. You've got to take some more tips from uh, Joe Wheeler there on how to run a good show. Yeah. But, um, yeah, obviously, Braden Mitchell's going to come in at hooker, uh, which is a massive um, selection. Yep. And uh, Tom Franklin at lock. So those two guys uh, put their hands up last week and deserve to get an opportunity tomorrow night. OK, so Lucy's, what are you st what's your starting, Lucy's? Uh, Lucy's will be Shane Christie... Uh, Elliot Dixon and um, Nasi Manu. Right, okay, so and backline will be, will be standard, is it? Yeah, okay, so look, let's come back to you now. What videos have we got in the pipeline? I hear there's um, there could be a, a massive house sale coming up yeah, with well, a couple of um, <laughs> big stars coming in. Yeah, well, bigger stars than myself. Um, we, we obviously just ran ran with the Master Chef last couple of episodes before this cheap. Yeah, I thought that was a bit oh, that was a bit tame. Didn't, didn't enjoy it? No, oh, fair enough. Um, We've got, yeah, a house sale, which um, Fumiaki Tanaka features again. Um, I've actually found him a house um, for him and his family to live in, and um, the dwarf that actually featured on Rugby Chat a couple of weeks ago... Jimmy D. Yeah, is going to make his first appearance on Hollanders TV, hopefully, and, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes and, and see how those two, those two short... You'll, you'll, you'll do huge numbers. Look, Brownie, look, I want to talk about this, the, the promotion for this game, and it's always hard. Look, we've, we've run the... We've run the in the paper this morning. Now, you've been through this as a, as a player. I, I mean, if you go back to the party at Tony Brown's way back in the 90s, and it was 1998, no B and I and a few others came up with that idea to, to, to run that at the time. So that, I've been looking for the arsehole. That's <laughs> so, so from your point of view, and, and, and perhaps from, and from, from Smithy's point of view as well, like, is, it, is, it quite, is, it, is, it, um, is it detrimental to the game, or to, to your preparation for games? Uh, yeah, it's, it should never... 
um, rugby is a team sport and it should never be about uh, one person. And so, yeah, like I said, the idiots that came up with that idea back in the day um, probably need to focus more on the team performing rather than an individual. And from memory, we lost that game. We did lose that game. Um, so look, but, on the, but if you look in the paper today, you'll see that um, I want people to cut it out, the, the ben, Smith, ben Smith poster in the ODT today, also on the star tonight, and wear that along. So Joe, will you be wearing the um, Ben Smith mask tomorrow when you play? Obviously a massive fan. Um, it'll be great to see uh, everyone with the uh, Ben Smith cut out. Is, he just, is this a bit of Braveheart? Sort of a There's a wee bit of a Braveheart thing going oh, on. Okay, yeah. No, I like what you've done. Um, yeah, you know, I... I don't know. I don't know if Bender will be too happy. He's such a modest guy. But yeah, well, I, I understand. Should have gone with Brownie's face again. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, but Brownie's such an angry man. Whereas <laughs> Ben, well, Ben is not an angry guy. He'll get over it. I mean, Brownie's Brownie's still harbouring that after what? How many years ago is that now? That's fifteen years ago, mate. You need to let it go. Oh, probably. <laughs> Look, let's come back onto the game. So, Joe, from your point of view, it's I've, I mean, I've I've written about this in the paper. I think tomorrow, saying that if you guys don't win this game, I don't think you make the top six. So have you, are you guys treating this as a must-win game? Oh, we treat every, uh, every game as a must-win. Um, yeah, it's, it is. I mean, if you're looking at it from, from that perspective, um, then, yeah, we have, to, we have to win this. But for us, we just go about our process as we have all year, um, focusing on week by week uh, how, we, how we get the results. So <clears throat> we just need to do the things that um, we've put in place uh, during the last week and a half, two weeks, to, to beat the Chiefs, and if we do that, we should we should go all right and, and give ourselves a, another chance. And as Jamie Joseph said, we've got a uh, a lottery ticket to the um, to the playoffs. And if um, if we can if we can cash in four points tonight, then um, our chances are just getting better. Right, Brady. So look back to you. Look, I, I looked at this. I've actually done some homework. This Chiefs side looks like their strongest lineup for the season. They've got. Pulu back in at halfback, and they've got big Robbie Fruin coming in the midfield. Does that change your mindset, the way you attack this game? Oh, not really, no. Um, they've obviously got some power there with Bundy Aki and Robbie Fruin. Um, they get their go forward, and then they just pretty much rumble after that with their forwards. So um, we've been preparing for it, and uh, we know it's coming. So defensively, we've just got to be um, winning the game line, making good tackles, big tackles, stopping their go forward. And if we can do that, we're halfway there to winning the game. Right, mate, and, and back to you. The big matchup I see in the forwards will obviously be Joe Wheeler and Retallick. So how does that how's that going to go for you? <laughs> Not even in the same league, mate. But, um, yeah, Brody's world class. Um, so you always look forward to those challenges. And as a rugby player, you want to test yourself against the best. So um, him and Sam Whitelock are, are the pinnacle at the moment. So just really excited about the opportunity to to have another crack at Brody. And he, he's a great man. He's a he's a fantastic footy player. So. I'll just, uh, I'll just do my bit and, and, uh, for, for our team and just hopefully do my job well. Right, boys. And just, just to finish, look, um, um, coming back to the crowd, look, we were worried yesterday, Brown, and I said there was only 9,000, 9,500, so I think those numbers are up well over 10 now. But, um, mate, I mean, it's all, you know, it's, we're doing the promotion with Ben Smith, but look, a crowd of 15,000 here uh, tomorrow night, that's just got to help us, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. Um Every rugby player likes playing in front of a big crowd and, um, you know, the Highlanders are playing some good footy at the moment, so it's a, it's a great watch. Um, so, I don't know, Mike Kerr probably just has to do a bit more work. Well, actually, it's quite surprising about Mike Kerr because, actually, I ran, he's, been, he's had three weeks to prepare for this game. I had to ring him on Monday to get him sparked up for this game. I mean, I, I mean what's going on? It's just not acceptable. Well, he, he doesn't take calls when he's on a surfboard, so, you know... Not doing a lot, is he? Have you got anything to say about the Mike Kerr's lack of performance as the marketing manager for the Highlanders this year? Yeah, well, I think maybe it could be a wee role swap. Maybe uh, you take you look to take over the marketing role for the Highlanders, and he comes and does the advertising and, and rugby chat. Look, cause... I, I could probably fit it in half an hour, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. yeah. And boys, we better go on to a couple of uh, a local matters. We've got, we have got club rugby this weekend, and since you're uh, Joe, you're tied up with the with the onion, and you're tied up with the Hawks Brownie. We'll just quickly w w run through the much-awaited form 15 changes this week. Matt Fattis comes in at fullback. I know you're going to say to me, Brownie, that he, he's actually playing in the midfield, but you know he's probably the best fullback we've got. Uh, so he comes in for Christian Walker. Nath Nathan Cargo from Southern goes out. He's been replaced by Marcus Sharp from the Hawks. T Ty Walden played, I think, played for you guys down in Invercargill on Friday, so he's gone. He's been replaced by Rowan McKenzie from the Sharks. Lockie Moore comes back in at second five for Hayden McBride. Nathan Hull comes out of six from the Kaikoura Club, been replaced by Willis Scott. Aliti Tonga 
from the Harbour Boat Club has been replaced by Big Joe Ladder, who won the game on his own last week against Southern. Mike Matafa from Southern comes out, replaced by Scott Manson. And there's only one big game brownie that I can see this weekend. Look, if Harbour don't go out to uh, the eel pit and beat the eels, they won't make the four. So do you give them any chance against the eels, considering they've only lost one game this year? Oh, the eels are a pretty sharp outfit. Um, uh, very well led and very well coached. But uh, I think if there's one team that could beat them, it could be Harbour. Um, they've been uh, building all year and they've finally got their best team on the park. And um, I know that they're really looking forward to this game and they're a physical side, so it's going to be a good contest. Joe, you've got an opinion on that game? You haven't watched a lot of club rugby, you've watched a bit of onion rugby, but uh, what's happening? What do, you, what, do you, what do you see between the Hawks and the Eels? Oh, to be honest, mate, just from, from the form and from talking to a couple of boys that have played for Tyre, I think they'll, they'll probably be too strong. I know, I know Brownie would be gutted about that, but I always like an upset, so I'm, uh, I'm hard up the Hawks this week. Uh, but if it happens, I'm going to say I'll, cl I'll claim it, but if it doesn't, I'll, I'll also say I, I told you so. So I'm sort of sitting at Bob each way, mate. Righto, that's just about it from Rugby Chap down here at the, uh, down here at the stadium at the, in the Spates box. But just remember, two big, two big games. Tomorrow night, wear your Ben Smith mask along to the game. It should show your support. One fifteen thousand here. The Highlanders get up late against the Chiefs. And in that big game out at the Eel Pit on Saturday, look, I think the Hawks are gone. I think the Eels will hold on to the Spates Challenge Shield and they will sit, stay at the top of the competition and we'll talk to you again next week.